This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it today with Squarespace. Back in 1986, we had one of the most iconic coming-of-age stories released in theaters. Ferris Bueller's Day Off came out to amazing success, and ever since then, there's always been rumors circulating everywhere of a sequel being in the works. Today, we're going to take a look back at Ferris Bueller's Day Off 2 and prove that, yeah, it's not happening. The idea of a Ferris Bueller sequel has actually been talked about a fair amount over time. Rumors have been around ever since the first movie came out. In fact, in 2012, this mysterious teaser came out randomly on YouTube out of nowhere. Here's the clip. How can I handle work on a day like today? Everybody freaked out and people were getting incredibly excited for what looked like to be a Ferris Bueller sequel. But everybody's hopes were crushed pretty quickly. This teaser ended up just being an ad for another ad. If you remember back in 2012, Ferris Bueller 2 was actually just a Super Bowl commercial for the Honda CRV. After that, many people's hopes were tarnished for a sequel to one of the 80s classics. But even after that, the rumors still never stopped. It's for a good reason too. A lot of these rumors have some real weight to them. In fact, three proposed stories have come out over the years. One from Alan Ruck, who played Cameron in the original, another from the director John Hughes, and another around 2011 when a mysterious leaked script appeared online entitled Ferris Bueller's Day Off 2, Another Day Off, which is just the worst title. But let's go over those three proposed stories and what they would have looked like. If you don't remember anything from Ferris Bueller's Day Off other than the fact that a real-life pedophile chases Ferris, don't worry, all you have to remember is that in the end, Ferris gives Cameron the courage to finally stand up to his father after the destruction of his beloved sports car, although I'm sure everybody remembers that. To start off the three stories, we'll begin with Alan Ruck's version of the sequel, which is probably also the worst one. Honestly, it barely even counts as a story since it's just his idea of how Ferris Bueller's Day Off ended and what would happen in the sequel, but I'd be doing you guys a major disservice if I just left this out completely. So in the book, you couldn't ignore me if you tried, Alan Ruck gives his version of what happened after the credits of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And it's, uh, it's something. He stated that, quote, Once Cameron's father got home, well, his father killed him. His father threw him out the window. And I do think Ferris and Sloane got married and then got divorced. Wow, okay, Alan, a little dark there. I mean, imagine going through a whole film, watching Cameron develop, and in the end, he finally decides to confront his father and stand up for himself, and then it just hard cuts to his body, thrown out the window where the car is. Then the credits roll. Alright, so that may not be the best idea, but let's put that aside. Alan Ruck went on to describe how he wanted Ferris Bueller's Day Off 2 to go. He said, quote, I used to think, why don't they just wait until Matthew and I are in our 70s and do Ferris Bueller Returns and have Cameron be in a nursing home. He doesn't really need to be there, but he just decided his life is over. So he committed himself to a nursing home. And Ferris comes and breaks him out and they go to, like, a titty bar and all this ridiculous stuff happens. And then, at the end of the movie, Cameron dies. Do you see why I said it's probably the worst one? Well, good thing we have two more proposed stories. John Hughes, director of Ferris Bueller's Day Off and arguably one of the most famous directors of all time, has actually had talks with the studio about a sequel. Here's what he had to say about it. Quote, We thought about a sequel to Ferris Bueller where he'd be in college or at his first job, and the same kind of things would happen again, but neither of us found a very exciting hook to that. The movie's just about a singular time in your life. John Hughes just believes his sequel isn't needed. He later came out to state that if it did happen, it would just be a lame rehash of the first movie and nobody wants that. And since we're in the golden age of lame rehashes, it's nice to see a director taking a stand against it. Unfortunately, since John Hughes passed away in 2009, we'll probably never see this version. But that's not the last proposed story. Two years after John Hughes' death, a random script leaks online for a Ferris Bueller sequel. Well, the first 12 pages leak. Everybody thinks it's going to be a sequel to their favorite film and everybody freaks out again. The plot of the film goes as follows. We fast forward Ferris's life about 20 years. In the years since high school, Ferris has turned into a motivational speaker, spreading his help all over the world. His best friend Cameron, who is now his manager, is still at his side at all times. But despite his phenomenal success, Ferris is a bit unhappy on his 40th birthday. He realizes he's let himself go and he's not the young great man that he used to be. He decides to take the day off with Cameron and tries to relive his past, basically doing another rehash of the first film. Ferris's sister, Jeannie, is married to the man that she met in the police station, who looks suspiciously like Charlie Sheen. Sloane Peterson is now a Hollywood star and is going through a rough marriage. Ferris and Cameron presumably pick her up on the adventure. Also, the weirdest part about this whole script is that the school administrator, Rooney, 
is still after Ferris. Like it's been 20 years, but I guess he's still after him for revenge? You'd think you would just get a restraining order at this point. Like seriously, Rooney, what is wrong with you? What are you some kind of- oh, yeah. As soon as these 12 pages leaked, it was immediately bashed by critics. In fact, it's incredibly hard to find the script online now. So eventually people started to wonder what the hell was going on with this script, and it turns out it was just written by a guy named Rick Rapier, an amateur screenwriter from Arizona. He sent it to Paramount for it to be adapted, but they never took it. Which is probably for the best. Most of the public was pretty unhappy about this. Some fans desperately wanted a sequel, but most people thought that maybe the script was better off not picked up. Now that we've gone through all three proposed stories, I've put a poll up in the top right corner so you guys can vote on which one was your favorite. Or if you don't want to see any of them at all, that's an option. For me, I definitely think we need to leave this film alone. No need to rehash in any way. But I'm not worried for Hollywood shoehorning a sequel. With John Hughes passed away, I think they would know better than to disrespect his legacy with a sequel he never wanted. Actually, who am I kidding? It's Hollywood. They'll do anything. I guess at this point, we'll just hope Ferris Bueller is left alone. I'd also like to thank Squarespace for making this episode possible. This is Squarespace's third sponsorship for Cut Short, so what more good things could I say? I've mentioned every time that their product is genuinely really impressive, and if you ever want to make an online store, portfolio, or blog, Squarespace gives you all the tools you need to make a beautiful website with no patches, upgrades, or installs required. There really is a template for everything, too, and they're all built to impress. Say your friend Sharon sees your website, she'll be like, wow, that looks really cool. I would love to know how to build a website like that, and it looks so nice. And you'll be like, yeah. I know, Sharon, okay? I got Squarespace, so my website's beautiful. Sharon, you have no idea how to make a website, okay? I see you trying to carve into that rock over there, trying to make one. How is that gonna help? I don't even understand. Sorry about Sharon there, she's uh, quite a piece of work. But in all seriousness, Squarespace templates are super easy to use, and their award-winning customer service makes launching any website easier than it's ever been before. If you sign up today at squarespace.com slash cut short, you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Impress all your friends, but mostly Sharon, by using Squarespace. So really, use the code squarespace.com slash cutshort to get 10% off and help keep this channel going. Yeah.